Hey guys, this is Alex from Wilkinson Audio. Uh, I'm going to show you two ways to edit drums for timing in Reaper. The first way is slip editing, and the second way is uh, similar to kind of a, de uh, a beat detective sort of method. Uh, so let's get started with the slip editing method. First I'll just show you what slip editing is, or what slipping an item is. And you hold, I think it's Alt on Windows and Option on, uh, Option on Mac. And that modifier lets you uh, slip items around. And slipping just moves the frequency information or all of the information inside the item without adjusting the boundaries of the item. And this is pretty integral to the slip editing method. So to do the slip editing method, we need a custom action. And I just have it called uh, drum split. And you need it bound to either uh, Option S on a Mac, I believe, or Alt S on a Windows machine. And this uh, custom action has to include uh, moving the edit cursor to the mouse cursor, selecting the item under the mouse cursor, and then splitting the items at the edit cursor. So essentially, when you have those in your custom action and, you bound, and you've bound all that to Option or Alt S, you just hit, or you hold Alt, and then anywhere you hit S, it'll make a split. And that's just handy for making really quick uh, splits for drum editing. And the other thing, the other reason why we bind it to Alt or Option is uh, because that modifier is the one that I believe by default uh, allows you to slip items back and forth. So you, basically you're gonna hold Alt the entire time. And we'll start uh, from the beginning here. This is our first uh, snare drum hit. So we're just gonna hold Alt, we're gonna hit S, we're gonna move it onto the grid. We're gonna continue holding Alt and, and then we slip it onto the grid. We go up here, we're, all, we're holding alt, alt the entire time, hit S again, slip this kick drum onto the grid, still holding Alt, hit S, slip this kick drum onto the grid, still holding Alt, hit S, and you kind of get it. And you just go through the whole uh, drum track like that, and you adjust everything for timing, and then you eventually you'll end up with a, a perfectly quantized drum track. And the nice thing about doing it manually is you've done some quality control, you've listened to every part, and you know that it's done properly, you know, the fills are all, uh, you know, you, you've done all the fills correctly and, and there's no uh, screw ups along the way and it's just a, a perfect drum track. But the downside to slip editing is it takes a very, very long time and it's very tedious. So yeah, as you can see, you basically would be doing this for a couple hours on the average track, depending on the complexity of it. And for very complex tracks, like really fast tech death stuff, you're probably gonna have to slip edit anyway just because it's so fast and it'd be so hard to do it with a with an automated method. Um, okay, so after you're done that, you would grab all of these and then make sure that options auto crossfade media items when editing is on. And then you can just add a crossfade to all those and then they'll be perfectly on time. So I'll play that with the metronome. My metronome's cowbell. Looks like I missed a kick drum there, but okay. So that's how you do slip drum or slip editing for drums. And the next method we're going to do is a semi-automated method. I believe that Adam Wathan invented. I think he did the scripting for this. I'm not too sure. Uh, you need SWS extensions installed to do this. So go grab those uh, if you if you don't already have them. Like it's so it's swsextension.org. You can download them and then just install them uh, in Reaper, follow their instructions. You're gonna need those to do this. And the first step here is we need to make, uh, we need to basically ren uh, render out a track of just the kick and the snare drum. And the quickest way to do that is to make a new track and then put everything in it. It's gonna be a folder track and all your drums are gonna go in it and uh, basically just solo your kick and snare. Try and balance them out level wise. Okay, I'll get rid of that metronome to make it easier. And, and so we're going to uh, take this new folder track and go, uh, where is it? Render freeze tracks, render tracks to mono stem tracks and mute originals. And that'll give us a render of just the kick and the snare drum. And you want these to be as even as possible um, visually. So we can see that our snare drum's a little bit loud. So I'm gonna turn our snare drum down a dB, and then I'm gonna try that again, rendering out that uh, just the kick and the snare again. 
And it's still a little loud. I'll do. I'll take another couple dB off. I'll try that again. And that looks. That's probably close enough. I think. Yeah, it should be fine. Okay. So then, uh, get rid of this folder track. You can unsolo these and group all these together with G. And then we're going to dynamic split this new one that's just the kick and the snare. And we want our dynamic split to, we want to adjust our settings, like the minimum slice length and our, our transient sensitivity and everything to try and capture uh, as many of these hits as possible. And it helps to look at uh, some more complex parts like this to make sure that you're going to capture everything because it's not catching that one and we want to adjust it until it is. And we just want to look around and see if it's missing any hits. And if it's not, I think that one is missing there. And it's not a threshold thing, so it might be a minimum slice length thing. And it was. So we've got that, and it looks like it's catching everything pretty well. So we want to take this and do split selected and grouped items, and then hit split. And it's going to split uh, everything, all of the group tracks, which is what we want. And now we want to grab um, parts of this. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to grab, um, right click on this grouping uh, icon here and do selecting one item selects group. Another thing you want to do is uh, go to options and take off auto crossfade media items when editing. That'll just make your life a little easier when you're doing this. And then we're just going to select uh, parts of this and we're going to adjust our grids to kind of match closest to where uh, the hits are. So you don't really want your grid like this if there's no hits in between. You just want your grid to be the largest uh, largest size it can be where the hits are landing in the section you've selected. So for this, it would this this would be the correct setting. This would not be because there's no nothing's being quantized to those hits in between. So you, you know you're just removing your chan your margin of error if you do this. And then we're going to hit Q, or I'm going to hit Q, which is uh, what I have quantized item positions in MIDI note positions to grid uh, bound to. And so we're gonna grab grab these and hit Q, and then it's going to put them uh, onto the, uh, the transients onto the grid. Okay, so we're going to the next part, same thing. This is a pretty simple drum track, and the reason this can be so quick is because we can grab these, and we can just hit Q, and they're all, you know, they're just like that, they're finished. Now we're getting into some uh, slightly faster material here, and, and we have hits in between where our grid is, so let's shrink our grid down again one more. And it's kind of hard to see it, but the grid is now is now uh, correct for, for this speed or for where the hits are landing here. And we're just gonna hit Q again. And you can visually see things are kind of working out. And we'll keep going. And we'll keep going. Okay, and then it looks like something might have happened here at the very end. Okay, cool. And I think that that's all correct. And what we're going to do now is we're going to grab all of the drums and then we're going to go, uh, and to get, bring up this actions menu, just type question mark, shift, uh, shift and then the question mark button, like how you'd actually type a question mark. And we're going to go fill gaps between selected items advanced. We're just going to run that. And the default settings should be fine. You can mess with these if you want. And you just click OK. And then that'll add all the crossfades in. And then if all is well, we should have uh, perfectly edited, edited tracks um, as well. Also, you notice that it marks possible artifacts for you to check out if you want to. Uh, more often than not, they're, they're nothing, but it's something to look into. And we'll, we'll play this back and we'll see how good of a job it did. There's some weird stuff at the end there that I'd have to look into, I think, but, uh, oh, it's just, yeah, okay. They quantize that to the wrong thing. Something like that. You could also just fix this part manually. See what it was trying to do. So I think it just missed that beat, and that one goes there. And then you have to auto crossfades again, and there you go. Perfect. Okay, so that seems good. Um, and something kind of weird happened here.
I think this beat, um, hang on, I lost that beat, where was it? There it is. This beat is, is very late and should, I believe, be back here, which might be a tricky edit to do. But you might have to do that manually because it's actually closer to the wrong beat, so you can't really do it automated. So that's probably about as close as you would get with that one. I don't know if you could really fix that issue there that you're hearing. So you wouldn't run into stuff like this if you're doing it manually. Like you, you would run into this, but you would know about it. Whereas if you do this automated stuff, you know, you'd have to listen through it and, and definitely check and make sure it did everything right. But for the most part, it got most of it right, and uh, that's cool. So that's uh, two ways to edit drums in Reaper. I hope you found that useful, and uh, yeah, cool. Awesome. Have a good day.